just a second. Are we on? We are on Facebook. We are on. Um, hey, everybody. We are uh, on Facebook right now, but the YouTube channel, I'm not sure uh, what the YouTube service is doing, but we're trying to make sure that the people who are watching on YouTube can see us. So that's what we're doing right now. But um, you want me to introduce everybody again? Introduce us again? Um, yes. I told them that we were... Um, okay, well, I think we're going to have to just go with what we've got. Just go with Facebook because I'm okay, not baby. sure what happened on we're, YouTube. We're on. I know. All right, everybody. <laughs> so, hey, everybody. Technology okay? works until it doesn't. <laughs> it's okay. Um, we're gonna work it out. We're gonna work it out. Just we just didn't some... want anybody to miss uh, miss it on YouTube, but we're gonna go right ahead. Why don't you introduce us? Pray for us. And while you're doing that, I'll send a message to the people on YouTube to come over to Facebook. Okay. That's All right. Fine. Let's do that. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your grace, your mercy. And we pray, Father, that you will just uh, bless us in this time of study together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All righty. All so, right. I'm Pastor DJ Manuel, and this is my wife, Lady Manuel. Hi, everybody. And we are from Greater Friendship Missionary Baptist Church at yes. Tuskegee, Alabama. And today, we are continuing with... Uh, the practice of worship from the book Grow. We're in the second chapter mm -hmm. of the book Grow, and we're talking about the practice of worship. Specifically, tonight we want to talk about faith um, and how that affects your worship, and if at all possible, we want to get to um, talk about humility yes. as uh, a part of our worship as well. And so, want to draw your attention to the Grow book. Excuse me. And I want to tell you to turn over with us to page 32. So on page 32 of the book Grow, um, we have an introduction to a section where we're talking about faith. And it says, and this is a scripture that we have from Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. And it says, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the, of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the first fruit of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. So we have uh, an account here where this is a type of worship, uh, giving offerings, and we will talk about that later in this chapter. This is a type of worship, and while they're going through this type of worship, the Bible says that God respected Abel's sacrifice, mm -hmm. but he did not respect Cain's sacrifice. And so with this, um, the question becomes why? Why would God have respect for Abel's sacrifice, but would not have respect for Cain's sacrifice. So, if you're reading your Bible, if you've got your study Bible, and you look at the cross-references um, down where the, the notes are for the, um, for the verses, you will find, it will most likely give you a reference to go look in the book of Hebrews. Okay. And so when you go to the book of Hebrews, it's chapter 11, verse 4, and actually it's in the Grow Book, um, Hebrews 11 and 4. You want me to read that? Where it says, well, I've got it right here. Okay. Where it says, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, mm -hmm. through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. So, mm -hmm. the writer of Hebrews says, that the reason why Abel's sacrifice was accepted, his offering was accepted, is because of faith. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, the big thing we want to really talk about is how our faith impacts our worship. Okay. How our faith impacts our worship. And when I'm, when I'm thinking about this, um, there are some things I want to share specifically tonight 
that I think may help us to, to grasp this concept. Mm -hmm. And it is that when we worship, when we're singing worship songs, when we're in a worship service, mm -hmm. our belief in God, our being convinced about who God is, affects the way we worship. Because that's what faith is. Right. Faith is, you know, we read it over mm -hmm. in Hebrews chapter 11 where it says faith is it's the substance, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. Well, that word faith in the Greek language, if you do a word study on faith, you will find that it means credence, it means being convinced, okay. it means being persuaded. Okay. So this is not just that you believe something, this means that you're completely persuaded that it's true. Right. That you're completely persuaded that that what is being said, mm -hmm. excuse me, what is being what is being written, mm -hmm. is is the absolute truth. And when you yes. have that kind of belief, when you have that kind of faith, um, that's where you want to operate from as a believer. That's where you want to uh, begin to engage with God yes. uh, as a believer. So. We're talking again about being completely and totally convinced. And so when you're singing a worship song, mm -hmm. you need to be convinced. Convinced of? What the song is saying about God. Okay. You need to be, cons you need to be convinced of what the lyrics of that song mean, mm -hmm. which is important because that means the songs you're listening to need to be based on the Word of God. Right. Exactly right. You know, you need to be listening to songs that are based on the truth of the Word of God. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes we sing some songs and they sound great, and and they you know have those double meanings. And, mm -hmm. and but but we want to make sure that the songs we're singing line up with the truth of the Word of God. Right. And so when you do that, and you can recognize it, mm -hmm. and you can identify that this song is about God, and what it's saying is true then you can engage your faith as you're worshiping God. And it's not just it's not just songs, right? It's not just songs. It's 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 again you're giving. You know, do you believe that if you give, God will give back to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That's a scripture. Yeah, but you that know, that, that act. Believe? Yeah, yes. that act that of act giving. of giving or that act of worship because giving is a form of worship. Yes. And we again, we're going to talk about that later in the chapter. Mhm. Mm when you believe in what you're doing, when you're convinced, uh, when you're persuaded that it is true, mm -hmm. you're operating in faith. And right. that's a place that you should always go to with your worship. It should be based on, on your faith. So mm -hmm. I, I wrote down some examples. When we sing the song, there is none like you. Yeah. Well, you know, I recognize the Bible tells us that there is none like God. Right. There's nothing like him in heaven above. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like him in the earth below. Mm -hmm. So when I sing that song, I'm singing the truth of Scripture. Right. That there is, no, there is none like him. I, I have faith in that. Yes. Because I've read it mm -hmm. and because I believe it. Mm -hmm. Or when I when I when we sing the song, I am a friend of God. Well, the Bible says that, you know, Abraham believed God, it was counted to him mm -hmm. for righteousness. Yes. And that God called him a friend. Jesus even said to his disciples, you're no longer servants, but friends. Mm -hmm. So I can believe that because I have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, I'm a friend as well. Right. I'm a friend of God. And I can believe that in faith. And because I believe that the words to that song while I'm worshiping carry meaning for me. Right. And so when we look throughout our worship services, mm -hmm. when we look ab um, at the at the songs we sing, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we are convinced. Yeah. We want to make sure that we are engaging our faith. When you mm -hmm. sing songs like "Holy, Holy, Holy, um, Lord God Almighty," well, yeah, the Bible says that. We just yeah, read about holy. that a couple of weeks ago, right. where the angels said the exact same thing in Isaiah chapter 6 mm -hmm. in the homework assignment you had a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Holy, holy, holy. You know? Yeah, is the Lord God Almighty. The, the whole earth is filled with his glory. Mm -hmm. When you sing these songs, you're, you're exercising your faith. Right. You're engaging your faith. Yes. And it's important because the Bible teaches us, you go, go with me to Romans chapter 10 verse 17 mm -hmm. Romans 10 and 17 you want me to go there yeah I want us all to go there let's okay. go to Romans 10 and 17 
and this is a this is a very important understanding of faith that I want you to get. Romans, that's not Romans. She's probably gonna get there before me, y'all. She always gets there before me. Man, see, I wasn't even there yet. I told you she was gonna get there before me. Romans ten and seventeen. Romans 10 to 17. Did I have that right? Maybe I said the wrong one. I oh, said the right. All right Romans 10 and Wait. 17. You read it. You read it. You read it. No, you read it. Golly, oh. You're so great. So faith comes from hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. But I ask. I just wanted verse 17. So faith comes by hearing, that is, hearing the good news about Christ. That's Romans Chapter 11, verse, verse 17. 10, verse 17. Chapter 10, verse 17. Chapter 10, verse 17. Okay, okay, okay. My apologies. So, faith comes by hearing, mm -hmm. and we're hearing the word about, about the Lord, right? We're about hearing, the good news. Right, about the good news. The, the New King James Version says, The good so news then, about Christ. The good news about Christ. The New King James Version says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So, your faith in God comes from your hearing about Christ and hearing the word of God. Mm -hmm. You need the word of God to activate your faith. Right. So when you're singing worship songs or you're participating in a worship service, the things that you're doing, the things that you're singing mm -hmm. need to be based on the word of God. Right. They need to have the word of God, uh, um, you know, in, in every aspect of it so that you can engage your faith. And if you stop and think about this now, okay. if you go to a traditional church service from the beginning of the service to the end of the service, mm -hmm. the word of God is present in every form in the service. Okay. So when you hear the call to worship, mm -hmm. I know on Sunday mornings you will hear me say, um, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Right. That's in the word of God. When we um, greet you and then we say, let's have a responsive reading. Mm -hmm. That's us speaking back and forth the, the word, word of God. God. Um, we pray according to the word of mm -hmm. God. You get a message uh, when you get a song that is um, you know, singing about the truth that is found in the word of God. Mm -hmm. That's based on the word of God. Mm -hmm. A message that comes from the word of God. Okay. Opportunities to serve. Um, opportunities to participate in worshiping through giving, all of those things from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And even at the very end, the benediction yes. is from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So the Word of God and our faith and our belief in the Word of God is mm -hmm. woven throughout the entire worship service. Right, right. So you can't really worship without faith. Without faith. You know, we want to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. We want to worship the Lord from a place of love, mm -hmm. from that innermost part of us. Right. But we need to worship Him in faith. And it, yeah. So if you're not, if you're not to that place right now in your relationship with God, mm -hmm. that means you've got to get more time in the Word of God. Yes. You've got to start not only reading the Word of God, you've got to start internalizing the Word of God, believing what you've read. Okay. And applying it to your life. That's mm -hmm. when it becomes real. When you begin to look for those, you know, principles to live by, um, practices to perform, promises to claim. Mm -hmm. You've got to start applying that word to your life so that when you hear it, you can respond properly and you can worship God. What do you mean by respond properly? Respond from a place of belief in God. Okay. Not just because it was a good idea mm -hmm. or because it sounded. You know, when you hear God is a battle axe in the time of battle, some people get rearing up about that. But, yeah, do, you, it's but a do you axe. know what that means? Yeah, do you know what that really means? Mm -hmm. Do you know what it's talking about? Mm -hmm. um, oh, he shall hide, you know, hide me under, under the, the shadow, shadow of, of his, his wings. wings. Do you know what that really means right. relationally for you as a believer? Mm -hmm. and, and can you worship God from that place? Um, from that place of really being convinced, having faith mm -hmm. that it is true. So those are the things that we, we have to consider when we are looking at the Word of God and mm -hmm. we're trying to comprehend um, how we're going to in, engage in worship. Right. So those are some things we want to talk to you just, just about faith. Um, even 
even the acts of worship, like, you know, lifting your hands or clapping your hands or any of those things, when you do those things, you're, you're doing those things based on what the word of God has told us about them. Right. You're doing that based on um, the scriptures that are being taught mm -hmm. to you during the worship about mm -hmm. what those things mean. Right. Um, that, you know, lifting your hands is a sign of surrender. Right. Uh, bowing is a sign of submission and humility. Mm -hmm. um, when you begin to shout unto God, you know, it's a voice of triumph. It's mm -hmm. a voice of victory um, that, that we are the hosts of the Lord. When you begin to do those things in right. worship, they carry they carry greater meaning when you understand them. So let's go back just a moment okay. to Cain and Abel. Let's go back to Cain and Abel. Because Cain gave a sacrifice. Abel gave a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. When you read that, it seems like there's not really a, a connection, like you said. It's not. Well, what I'm saying is you don't see the reason that Abel's sacrifice was accepted. Mm-hmm. And Cain's was not unless you go to this cross reference that you spoke right. of. Right. So when we um when we participate in when we offer worship in faith, mm -hmm. believing that God is, mm -hmm. and we give him the first fruits, like Abel did, the first fruits of our time, the first fruits of our increase. Mm -hmm. How how then um, have we been or have we in times past or people in general act like Cain and just not honor God or not truly believe that God is or give him respect? I think that's what you were talking about in the, in, in the book, really not... Um, how how does that work? I'm I'm trying to make sure that I understand okay. the dichotomy between Cain and Abel's offering. I hear what the word says. I've read it, but can you give us in in layman's terms? Okay. Again, I know we talked about it, but I I just want to. Okay. Yeah. So. For me, and maybe somebody else. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what you have happening with Cain and Abel? Mm -hmm. is someone who has come to worship God, talking about Abel, mm -hmm. fully believing that God is who he says he is mm -hmm. and that God desires for him to worship. Right. And he is, because he fully believes it, he's fully convinced, mm -hmm. he's coming to bring his sacrifice. Okay. You have a person in Cain who, instead of being fully convinced, He's just going through the steps. Okay. He's just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. He's not engaged in this worship. He's not activating. He's not worshiping from a place of belief in God. So he just gave because he knew he was supposed to give. He he wasn't really giving because he believed that God was that who it was he what, said he was. That God was who he said he was that God desired for him to do it, mm -hmm. and that there is a purpose behind him doing it. Mm. You know, sometimes we do things just because, you know, it's just supposed to be done. Right. Um, but there's typically with God, you know, we're always looking for those principles to live by. We're looking for those, you know, practices to perform, and we're looking for those promises to claim. Mm-hmm. Even in our worship, we mm -hmm. can find those things. Right. You know, we, we we find promises like give and it will come back to you. Right. People. So sometimes you can give already just in faith knowing that, you know what, it's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. Or you can give, you know, the tithe and the offering. Why? Because God says, you know, there need to be resources in the house of God. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give the tithe. Mm -hmm. But then I also know that by doing so, God is going to open the windows of heaven, right. pour me out a blessing so much so that I cannot receive. He's going to rebuke the devourer for my sake. So there are promises for me to claim mm -hmm. so that it's not like, oh, well, here we go. I got to pay my tithe. Mm -hmm. you know? No, 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 no. I'm worshiping the Lord. Right, right. This is not about paying tithes or giving an offering as much as it is 
this is worship. Yes. And I do these things in faith. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like singing today, but I'll sing. No, no, no. I right. want to lift up my voice because God says in his word that everything that has breath, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. That we mm -hmm. ought to offer to him the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips. Right. So there are some things that when you come to worship, your, your mind needs to be on worship. Yes. Your heart needs to be set to worship. Mm -hmm. Your faith needs to be engaged in worship. You know, that everything you do during worship is significant. Yes. It's significant because of who God is and mm -hmm. it's significant because of what you believe. Absolutely. So we had a person who just went through the motions versus somebody who came with their whole heart. Mm -hmm. Somebody who came in faith. Um, and that's that's what was really going on with Cain okay. and Abel, you know. Okay. There are a lot of folks who come. There are a lot of folks who come to God grudgingly. Mm. There are a lot of people who come to God out of necessity and not necessarily obligation. Not an obligation, and don't realize that every time you come to God is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it worship is an opportunity. Yeah. Worship is an op a opportunity. And opportunity, an opportunity yeah. not an obligation. Right. And so when you approach when you approach God for worship mm -hmm. and you're not approaching him in faith, right. your worship is really empty. Ooh. Okay. If all you're doing is moving your hands, but you you know, I'm gonna clap today. Because someone not, told you to. Or because it had a catchy beat, but not because you wanted to celebrate God. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you know you clap to celebrate. Right. Um, you don't really want to celebrate God, but the drummer just happened to be doing something and you just want to, you know, you know, do your thing. Mm -hmm. You still haven't worshiped. Mm -hmm. You still haven't engaged. Still haven't engaged. You know, you haven't activated your faith. Yeah, I got you. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm in a place right now mm -hmm. where I'm more thoughtful about worship, mm -hmm. where I'm beginning to think about what the words mean when I listen to worship songs. Okay. And I'm starting to think more about what the word means when I hear it. Right. You have no idea how many Sundays I just want to stop in the middle of the responsive reading mm -hmm. and just worship for a minute. It's like, I just read that. I just sometimes mm -hmm. want to read it twice. Yeah. Because it's just so good to me. I mm -hmm. just want to pause and worship and give God thanks for what I read. I keep going for the sake of everybody else, but right. part of me just right. wants to, you know, there's so many times I have given the benediction at the end of the service and just wanted to shout because right. I think about what those words mean mm -hmm. and I think about how powerful they are. You know, now unto him who's able to keep you from falling. And I, right there, just the right. part that he's going to keep me from falling makes me want to run around the church. You right. know? And, uh, and so we, we, because of my faith in mm -hmm. God, everything that happens during the worship service now has meaning for me. Right. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've I've had some Sundays where that tithe envelope, that tithe envelope and or, or my offering envelope is just burning a hole in my hand. Yeah. I just want to wave it. I want to yes. just I want to shout because I remember mm. what it was like when I had nothing. Yes, God. In fact, mm. I may on some on some Sundays come to church and had nothing the week before and was just glad to be able to tithe this week. <laughs> just right. just want to, you know. Yes. I'm I'm the meaning behind mm -hmm. what we're doing in mm -hmm. worship. Understanding that from the perspective of the word of God. Right. Helps us to worship God from a place of faith. Because we believe. Because we believe. We believe what we're reading uh, in his word. Mm -hmm. We're believing, like you said, we take to heart uh, the principles to live by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we, we take to heart um, the promises to claim. And the practices we to perform. We take to heart the practices to perform because we talked about the covenant relationship that we have with right. God. He has a part, we have a part. That's it. And when we, our part is trusting him. Our part is having faith in him. Right. And knowing that he's going to honor his part, that causes worship to well up and inside of your heart. Knowing and believing and being 
convinced mm -hmm. that God is going to do his part, mm -hmm. that's when faith kicks in. Right. There's a lot of people believe in God, but don't have enough faith to live for God. Mm -hmm. And so at some point, you actually have to engage your faith. In the book, we gave an example. In the book, we talked about uh, the example of a chair. Okay. You know, I can look at a chair and and I can believe all day that that chair can hold me up. In fact, mm -hmm. let me get the book because I want to make sure I tell you about it correctly. I just lost my paper, which means we're going off the rails now. <laughs> so funny. What? Uh, do you want me to read it? Are you done? Uh, you found it? Because hmm? if you did, that is just awesome. Yeah, you should do it. Do you want me to read the portion about the chair? Yes, that paragraph after Hebrews 11 and 4 okay. on, on page 33. Okay. So, it says, this is right after, like he said, chapter, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. It says, the writer of Hebrews reveals Abel's sacrifice was more excellent because it was offered to God by faith. This is important because the word faith in the Bible means more than belief. Its definition lends more to persuasion and conviction than belief. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For example, I may consider sitting in a chair, believing it's sturdy enough to hold my weight. I can believe that all day and still never sit in the chair. However, my belief turns into an act of faith once I sit in the chair. So faith is being convinced I'm willing to act on what I believe. That's good. Keep going? No, that's good. That's okay. that's the part I wanted us to get, that, you know, being convinced. Reverend Jackson told a story a few years ago mm -hmm. about a man who was uh, flying across country for the first time. He was mm -hmm. an older gentleman, never flown before. Okay. And he was afraid to fly. And when he arrived where he was going... Mm -hmm. People ask him, how was the flight? Mm -hmm. He said, well, you know, I never put my weight down. He's on the plane, but he was holding himself up the whole time in his seat. He never put his weight down. Okay. Because he didn't have faith that the plane could hold him up. But it was already holding him up. I know that, and you know that, but he <laughs> didn't know that. <laughs> you know, so he was just, you know, I don't know if I can trust it. I don't know if I can believe it. And so he, he flew the whole time, never putting his weight down. Okay. And I think some of us have that kind of relationship with God, that mm. we don't always put our weight down. Mm -hmm. We don't always give him our all in worship. Yeah. We don't always express ourselves completely or mm -hmm. believe him completely. Right. And we try to keep, you know, kind of hold ourselves up. So mm -hmm. that's that's a whole nother study altogether. But you got to have some faith. Right. Um, engage your faith when you're worshiping God. Absolutely. Okay? There's a quote in the book I wanted to share with you. Um, I, I put a little mark next to it. Do It's the, it's the very last sentence in that section on faith. It says, dancing, it's on page 34, dancing, shouting, and singing are simply physical motions with no spiritual value if we fail to do those things out of our faith in God. So we need to make sure that we are exercising our faith mm -hmm. when we're worshiping. We don't want our worship to be empty. Right. We want to worship because we believe Yes. Again, God is who he said he is. He can do what he said he can do. That's it. Yep. So here's another thing about worship that we want to be able to talk about mm -hmm. tonight is humility. Yes. And humility, um, we have a story here about King Uzziah, and you may remember hearing his name when you read in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. Isaiah mm -hmm. said that in the year that King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord. He saw the Lord <laughs> high and lifted up, and his train filled um, filled the temple. So, um, I so here in the book, the book grow. We have a story about Isaiah, and I want to read that to you because it sets the background for what we want to talk about with humility. This is taken from 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verses 16 through 20. And it says, But when he was strong in his heart, mm -hmm. and his heart was lifted up. Let me start over. 
But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God by entering the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Mm -hmm. So Azariah the priest went in after him, and with him um, were 80 priests of the Lord, valiant men. And they withstood King Uzziah and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests, mm -hmm. the sons of Aaron, who are consecrated to have incense. Mm -hmm. Get out of the sanctuary, for you have trespassed. You shall have no honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah became furious, mm -hmm. and he had a censer in his hand to burn incense. Mm -hmm. And while he was angry with the priests, leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord mm -hmm. beside the incense altar. And Azariah, the mm -hmm. chief priest, and all the priests looked at him, and there uh, on his forehead he was leprous. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they thrust him out of that place. Indeed, he also um, hurried to get out because the Lord had struck him. Wow. So we have an account here of King Uzziah. Now, if you read the entire chapter, that, that whole chapter of Second Chronicles 16, you will find, um, uh, sorry, Second Chronicles chapter 26, you will find Uzziah was a great man. Okay. He was a great king. The Lord was with him. He did a lot of great things. Mm -hmm. But like verse verse 16 says, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up. Mm. So that means he was prideful. He was prideful. He became prideful and determined to do something that the Lord said only the priest should do. Okay. And that is burn incense to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he goes into the temple to do things his own way. Mm -hmm. God has already given a very strict prescription for how the worship should take place. Right. He does things his own way and God is not pleased. Okay. And because God is not pleased, um, he is struck with leprosy. Right. And so this story, this story illustrates to us the importance of having humility mm -hmm. when we when we approach God. Right. This is what we say over here in the Grow Book on page 35 in the second paragraph. This story reveals the error of worshiping God mm -hmm. with a prideful heart. Mm -hmm. But conversely, it reveals why we should worship God with humility. Mm -hmm. We can't become mm -hmm. so self-important that we can't truly humble ourselves and be vulnerable before God in worship. Right. The Bible also describes humility as bowing before God or lying prostrate on the ground before him. Mm. This imagery is counterculture to those of us in America. We typically rise to honor dignitaries, judges, and presidents. But when we rise, we maintain our dignity, identity, and beliefs about ourselves. We acknowledge the position of the person being honored but we are not bowing before them. The mm -hmm. Bible teaches us that God is worthy of all honor, um, but our honor originates from a posture of humility, not dignity, and self-importance. Yeah. And so we have to understand That's good. that being, I guess the best way I could describe being humble before God is knowing your place. Mm. You know, the priest told Isaiah, this is not for you. Mm -hmm. And with God, knowing your place means you know how great and how mm -hmm. awesome and how powerful and omnipotent, mm -hmm. omniscient, uh, omnipresent God is, the creator of the universe. And then you also understand we're just a sack of dirt and a puddle of water. That that we have to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves, you know, because we we have a certain amount of pride in ourselves mm -hmm. and self-esteem when we're dealing with other people. Mm -hmm. But when we approach God, we got to bring all that but down. But that is worship. Remember, we talked about that in the first, um, the first segment about worship. Worship is putting God in his rightful place. Putting God back on the throne. That's right. Putting us back in our place as yes. well. And I think yes. this time what we're focusing on is 
putting ourselves back in our place. Mm -hmm. You know, the first time mm -hmm. we were talking about putting God in his place. Okay. On I got the you. throne. But now we have to put ourselves in our rightful place. So that's humility. That's humility. Being broken before God. Mm -hmm. Um uh, honoring God the way he should be honored, mm -hmm. um, recognizing that there's, there's, you know, the Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. We have no righteousness of our own. We have no greatness of our own. Right. Everything we have, everything we are comes from God. We have to be humble when we go to worship. Mm -hmm. And I wrote something down that I just wanted to talk about a little bit about this humility. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes when we are prideful we believe our ideas about worship or our traditions of worship mm -hmm. are what's holy instead of god being holy okay so let me see if i can explain this all properly. right break that down for us this is the year 2020 mm -hmm. um you know at i um, Adonai Domini, A.D., 2020 mm -hmm. A.D., 2020 years since Jesus was born. Okay. Okay? Um, in this time, worship has changed. Okay. It has changed. You're talking centuries. Okay? Think about this. It's 20 centuries. Mm -hmm. we, we've gone through all of these centuries, and worship has changed. Unfortunately... Mm -hmm. We have some people who believe that one way to worship that a previous generation did mm -hmm. or that a, pre that a particular culture worship mm -hmm. is the right way to worship. Okay. And we take pride in those forms of worship. Okay. And we sometimes look down on the worship that doesn't look like, sound like what we're comfortable with. Oh, that's good. That's good. And that's a form of pride, too. Mm. Is it? Yeah, it is. When you take so much pride, I've heard people say, um, you know, these people singing these newfangled songs, that ain't worship. That's, that, that, that's, not, that's not good gospel music. That's not honoring God. Well, mm -hmm. actually, it is honoring God if it's done in humility, it's done in faith, it's based on the word of God, just because it's not the songs you grew up with. And they're doing it in spirit. And in truth. And spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. Just because it's not what you grew up with. Mm -hmm. Just because they have more instruments to work mm -hmm. with. Because I remember growing up as a kid that people were like, that's not worship, you know. You you, know, you get a drum set in your church, you go into hell. And I'm like, <laughs> what? How can you say that? The Bible says to worship him on the high sound cymbals. We can't even bring a drum set in. Right. But, but there were people who had these pictures in their mind that this is the right way. Mm-hmm. The right way is what we're really talking about. Spirit and truth, in love, in faith, mm -hmm. in humility. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we do just get so stuck on our way of doing yeah. things yeah. that we become prideful. Mm -hmm. And we will not humble ourselves to worship. See, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter to me. You can worship the Lord on a banjo. And if and if it's, I don't care if it don't sound good to me. If the lyrics are, are giving God the praise, mm. I can still clap my hands. I right. can still worship God. I might even sing along. You can worship God on a flute and have somebody on the side reading some scriptures from the Psalms. Guess what? If it's worship, I'm down for it. If you if you got a guy, I'm gonna tell you this. Some of our <clears throat> I guess I'm going to say it. Tread lightly. Tread lightly. <laughs> Tread lightly. I don't know what you're about I'm to not say. a light fellow. <laughs> Tread lightly. <laughs> well, no, no. So what I want to say was, uh, what I want to say is, you know, when in my teenage years, you know, they came up with this new form of music called rap music. Mm -hmm. And there were people who just like, that's the devil's music. Don't bring it into the church. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I have heard some Christian rap artists I hate to say this, that have had more worship and more truth and more mm. of God's word in their songs than some Ooh. sermons I've heard. And so for me, the question is, is God being praised? Is mm -hmm. God being worshiped? Is mm -hmm. God being honored? I know it doesn't make sense to some people because mm -hmm. it's a different culture. Mm -hmm. It's a different age group. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand 
we have to worship God in our time and in our season. I'm glad you said that because if you think back, you know, our parents, they they grew up with different music. Right. Their parents grew up with different types of music. Parents before them grew up with different types of music. You know, it changed in the 60s. It changed in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s. Now we're in the 2000s. I guess what I'm saying is we can't get stuck on one type of worship. Or and become, pr- and worship. become prideful about it. Exactly. You know, we can't do that. You the, know? I mean, to, there's a song, To Serve This Present Age my calling to fulfill and so glad you brought that up mm-hmm. that's the song of charge to keep i have mm-hmm. um this concept of as an example this concept of a gospel choir having a choir at your church that's not singing from the hymnal mahalia jackson was a teenager when gospel choirs were created okay that's only been one generation ago okay in our hymnal, the very first song in our hymnal is Holy, Holy, Holy. That song was written in 18, 1861, I believe. Okay. 1861, Holy, Holy, Holy was written. Okay. You know how much music has changed <laughs> since 1861? As much as, you know... The times have changed okay. and generations have changed. The language has changed. Okay. The English language has changed. You know, sometimes when we read songs in the hymnal, you don't have to admit this. I'll admit it for you. Some of you have read songs and sang songs in the hymnal and you could not comprehend what they were saying because the sentence structure is not the way that we say mm-hmm. sentences today. Mm-hmm. And that's because things have changed. Mm-hmm. And so when we have one generation telling another generation that because it's not their style or their mm-hmm. culture that the worship is not true, mm-hmm. we need to get down to the brass tacks of what makes worship real. Yes. It's not our music style. It's not, um, you know, it's not our personal preference. Mm-hmm. It's not our culture. Mm-hmm. It's worship that's done in spirit and truth. Mm-hmm. It's worship that's done, you know, with love from the heart, mm-hmm. worship that's done in faith, mm-hmm. and and it's it doesn't. I mean, we we all have our preferences. However, we can't. We have to humble ourselves and not judge others who have different preferences or become if so right in our own right. Eyes, if know? it's if it's worship, I mean, I, I listen to worship songs. Uh, in in every uh, genre of music, jazz music. I I like um, country music if it's worship. You know what I'm saying? I was listening. We in August. Shut up. That's not nice. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I can't with him. Um, it's it's all different types of of music that people have poured out their heart in worship to God, um, Christian rap. Um, it, it, it doesn't even have to be sometimes, it doesn't even have to be music. I mean, I love gospel music. I, I love, saw What that. I'm saying is I love all types of music that worship God. Well, and, and I guess, again, if you, and the reason why I brought this up is because in King Isaiah's case, mm-hmm. God had given a very strict prescription on how worship could be done. That was very specific, and he violated that Mm -hmm. because of pride. Yeah. But in our case today, it's not that we have this prescription that we have to burn, you know, the right kind of incense. We don't Mm -hmm. worship like they did in the Old Testament. Okay. In our case, we're showing pride in some other ways. Okay, talk to us about what that what you mean by that. What I mean is again, 
we take pride in our culture. Mm -hmm. We take pride in our preferred style of music. Okay. We take pride in our preferred method of having a worship service because okay. we've done it the same way our entire lives. Okay. The generation before us did it that way. And we will tell people that if they do something different, then it's not right and that it's not good or it's not as good as what we grew up on. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's a form of pride because you have gotten to a place now where you're saying, this one is the best. This is the only. This is the only way to do it. This is the best way. So you're and so saying, I can't even worship any other way. So you're saying, they're saying, the style is more important than the worship. Thank you. The style is more important than the worship. The culture is more important than the worship. Mm -hmm. And so, we miss opportunities to really glorify God mm -hmm. if it's not because we just kind of limit God. Mm -hmm. we put and we're box. talking about corporate worship. We're right? talking about corporate worship, um, but it's a I personal, mean, uh, but it's again. a personal preference. And so, even in corporate worship, mm -hmm. you have to address. Mm -hmm. You have to address what's going on on the inside of mm -hmm. you. My wife and I went to a conference. Mm -hmm. We went to this conference while we were there. This um, a gospel, Christian a Christian conference, a gospel music artist came in to sing and because she didn't sing the style of music that the people were used to they just sat there and looked at her mm -hmm. she was pouring out her heart mm. she was I mean she was trying to get into the throne room of God yes. but the people who were there because they just couldn't get with the music style mm -hmm. would not enter into worship Right? they, they refused to worship because mm -hmm. that ain't worship mm -hmm. in their minds but is it the word though? It's a, again. Is it? Is that's it, a form right. of pride, mm -hmm. where you say my way is the only way, mm -hmm. my way is the only right way, mm -hmm. and and God, you you really limit yourself in worship, because I've entered into worship watching a person paint a painting. I was in a service. They played some worship music. The young man was painting his painting. He painted the whole thing upside down. And when he got finished, he turned it over. It was actually Jesus with a crown of thorns. Oh, and and I, I about got to shout him just because he was painting with so much passion. He was yes. he was into it. He was throwing yes. paint. He yeah. was just everywhere. I was like, what is he doing? Uh -huh. And then when he flipped it over, you could almost feel the entire arena go crazy. It was like, it's Jesus. Yeah. You know, there are some people who are like, oh, I don't want that paint all over my church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and God gives us different gifts, talents, abilities, so that we can express uh, our worship. Yes. You know, and, and like you said, there's no one way, one style of music. I know we've been um, that's just an example. talking about yeah. that, but that's just an example. God gives us um, so many different ways to worship him, you know. Um, and dance. I was about to say lyrical dance, spiritual dance. A lot of people have had things to say about uh, you know, praise dancers being in the church or or a step team. Step right, right, right. Yeah, I know and that people were doing stepping when they were on campus and they were in their college or whatever. But mm -hmm. when you see people stepping and the whole time they're talking about how great God is, yes. how awesome God is, yes. it's just amazing. It's all about humbling yourself, you know. And what gifts and talents has God given you to? be able to worship him through and because you don't feel like you will be accepted or you feel like um it's not good as someone else's or something that you don't you know particular you haven't developed that gift you feel like you know i'm i'm not offering that up mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not giving that to god that's pride yeah, because that's saying it has to be a certain. Yes. I have to be at a certain level in my order right, to do that. Right. Now, he, you got to go ahead and mm -hmm. worship God from a place of humility. Mm -hmm. And we, as a church, we as churches, should not be so prideful that we put shackles on people's worship. We need to humble ourselves mm. and give people an opportunity to that's try. That's good. That's give good. people an opportunity to worship mm -hmm. you know 
and not just say it has to be our way. And that and that doesn't mean that we don't, you know, guide people, help them to uh, mature in their faith as we're growing, mm -hmm. you know, um, again, in spirit and in truth, worshiping God um, in faith, worshiping him with humility. Mm -hmm. That's not, we're not saying, you know, people just do whatever they want. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that if this, this worship is based on in spirit and in truth yes based on the word of god yes it's done out of a place of love yes done with faith yes. done with humility if you've actually gotten in the word of god mm -hmm. and and the word of god is is instructing you mm -hmm. you can make that worship yes absolutely you know, I, I like what the Bible says. Worship him on the high sound and cymbals yeah. and the trumpet and the harp. We don't even have a harp. Well, we do have a harp. That's basically what a piano is. It's a harp turned sideways. But anyway, that's a whole nother debate. Um, but the point is, we need to make sure that pride mm -hmm. does not creep in and cause us to put shackles on worship. Right. Okay. We need to do that for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need to do that for other people who are worshiping. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if there are things you don't understand, go read about it. Right. If there are things you can't comprehend, mm -hmm. go find it in the Word of God. I've been in worship services. Oh, Jesus. And, and, and this is, I know this is way out on the edge, but I'm just going to say this. I've been in worship services where people literally passed out. Mm. And they were on the floor. And I thought to myself, now that's just crazy. Why do people fall all over the floor? Then I went to the book of Ezekiel. Mm. And in the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel had an angel come visit him. And the angel stood before him. Mm. Ezekiel said he fell down on his face as dead. He said the angel wow. picked him up. And he fell down again. <laughs> he passed out twice. So I said, well, this whole idea well, of being slain in the spirit or right. passing out, that right. actually happens to people. It happened in the Bible, right. you know. Right. So, you know, get in the word of God mm -hmm. to activate your faith that you believe what the word of God has to say about worship. Right. And then have some humility about yourself and give yourself a chance. And I just want to add to that, uh, that we should encourage our young people. We should encourage them to uh, express themselves in worship. They need an outlet. They need a way to express themselves. And I don't think we should uh, make them do it like yeah. we have done it. We need to uh, engage with them. See what gifts and talents God has blessed them yeah, with yeah. and nurture those gifts and talents within them you know I, guide I just, them I, guide them you know and and help them to understand the word help them to know what it is that god is doing in and through them and help them to express themselves because what it's all about evangelism it's all about you know our worship is to god but when we when we exemplify that worship, mm -hmm. we are showing other people what, you know, how we interact with God is an example to other people. It's a testimony. Exactly. It's a testimony. That's what I'm trying to take. It, <laughs> it testifies of our, of our faith and it shows, you know, that worship is, it's real. It's listen, okay listen, to do that. Listen. But young people, yeah. Yeah, young people. But right now, we need some of our old people to actually start worshiping God Ooh. so that the young people can see the example. Because we got plenty of adults who come to church mm -hmm. and you are the frozen chosen. You sit in that one spot. Well, you go. do not express any love. Yeah, I used to be one of the frozen chosen. I'd go to church and be like, what you mean? Clap your hand. Yeah. Or I go there and sit and arms crossed and I don't feel like it today or mm -hmm. I'm tired. And we don't show them how to worship. Mm -hmm. uh, we we've got to we've got to start worshiping. Mm -hmm. And and I think that as we truly learn how to worship. Yes. 
um, you know, we're going to finish this chapter at some point, but we're taking our time. Mm -hmm. As we truly learn how to worship and put it into practice, yes. we will see miracles, signs, and wonders. Mm. We will see things changing in our lives. We right. will see our attitudes changing. We'll see things changing around us because when you worship, you're inviting the presence of God in. And so That's it. This, this chapter is pivotal for when we do go back to the sanctuary when we do go back to worship right that we that we engage with God this way mm -hmm. so just want to wrap up tonight and just I want you to just take some time and think about you know what worship means to you right I want you to you know get into the word of God excuse me I would like for you to read Psalm 100 through Psalm 104 okay those psalms talk a lot about worship and reasons why we worship and about praising God. Um, look at those psalms and see what it's saying. Get okay. this. Get the right attitude about praise and about worship. Okay. And and um, let it kind of influence you to begin to think differently. Just do do like a chapter study on on those chapters. Mm -hmm. Psalm one hundred through Psalm one hundred four. And, and allow God to minister to you. We're going to ask you some questions about it next week. So this is your homework. So spend some time looking at those psalms. And again, pay attention to all of these acts of praise and worship mm -hmm. and even the reasons why it says we should praise and worship God. Right. Okay? So right. that's what we want okay. to do for next week. Um, and we will pick up next week in the Grow Book. Um, we mm -hmm. just finished Humility. We didn't know if we were going to get there, but we made it. So we, we went through the section on humility, and now what we want to do next week, if we can, is we want to talk about thanksgiving and sacrifice Yes. Um, before we get to the forms of praise and worship. So thanksgiving and sacrifice we'd like to cover next week on pages 36 through 38 okay. and be able to talk about the importance of approaching God with thanksgiving and bringing a sacrifice. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. Wow. All right, Pastor, will you pray us out? I will, I will. All right, y'all. Oh, wait, before you. you go, though, before you go, just want to remind you mm -hmm. that um, we're continuing to worship the Lord virtually. We'll be here each week for Bible study. Mm -hmm. And um, please just share it with others. Let God use you to be a blessing to someone else. And if you're watching tonight and you're determined that you want to become a part of our church, you can go to greaterfriendship.com and click on Become a Member. And um, we would just love to, to hear from you. Do we have any comments before we go? That's what I was about to look. I didn't want to. Um, I just remember we need to look at comments to see if we had any questions and comments, rather. Uh, all right. No questions. No okay. questions. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Well, I hope this has been a blessing for you, and we look forward to seeing you on Sunday at 1045 a.m. and next Wednesday at um, 6 o'clock p.m. and also on Monday nights, call into our prayer call at 7 o'clock p.m. All right. All right, let's pray together. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your favor, mm -hmm. and we ask, Father, that you would just help us, Lord God, as we continue to learn what it means to worship you. Mm -hmm. I pray for the health and safety of every person um, that is in our church congregation and those who are watching online. We ask God just for your care to be for them, um, that Lord, you would dispatch your angels to, to be with them, to gird them up, to, to bear them up in their arms, lest they dash their foot against the stone, mm -hmm. according to your word. And we ask, Father, that you would just let our minds wander into what it truly means to worship you. And show us how to engage in worship with our faith and also to worship you with humility. Yes, we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, amen, everybody. Good night. We love you all. We love you all.